Greetings. I know that there's only a handful of people here, but it's Easter. And I know that it's, it's maybe really easy to find yourself being a little saddened by the fact that maybe you're not with everybody else, but it's Easter. I mean, this is the day in which we look forward to because this is the day that we realize no matter what happens, victory is ours. It's Easter. So let's celebrate it. We'll, we'll follow the order of service that's printed for you in your service folder. If you need it, um, download it underneath the video, pull it up, and, and let's worship our God together on this Easter morning. Uh, please stand. I've been waiting to say this for a really long time, and I know that I'm only going to hear like two or three people respond back to me, but I know you'll say it at home. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us sing. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us rejoice and give thanks to God for the victory our Lord Jesus Christ won by his death and resurrection. It is for us that he has triumphed. Christ died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For God, who created light to shine out of darkness, made his light to shine in our hearts to give us the life, the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll now sing hymn 160, This Joyful Easter Tide.
has blood has lost its gem since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from hell, my passing soul deliver. Had Christ who once was slain not burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now is Christ arisen, arisen, arisen. But now is Christ arisen. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him, and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him, and plead for his mercy. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father in heaven, heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In, in countless ways I have sinned against, against you, and, and do, do not, not deserve, deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you the strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. And see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It's the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in Him. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever.
Our first lesson this morning comes to us today from Jonah, chapter 2, verses 2 through 9. We read, He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the belly of the grave I cried out, You heard my voice. You threw me into the depths, into the heart of the seas. The currents surrounded me. All your breakers and your waves swept over me. I said, I have been driven away from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Waters encompass me to the point of death, but the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the root of the mountains I sank down. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord. My prayer came to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to the worthless idols forsake the mercy that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will indeed sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will indeed repay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with our psalm of the day, Psalm 118, which can be found on page 108 in the front part of our hymnal or on the screen. This is 
the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Our second lesson this morning comes to us today from Colossians chapter 3, the first four verses. We read, Therefore, because you were raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. 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 Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please stand for the words and works of our Savior Jesus. Our gospel comes to us today from Matthew chapter 28. The section of Scripture serves as a basis for our sermon. It is the Easter account. We read. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, he rolled away the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead. And look, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. See? I have told you. They hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They approached, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers that they should go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Um, I now invite all of the kids of the congregation to come forward for the, the children's sermon. Hi. Hello. I hope you guys are having a great Easter. What an awesome day it is for us to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Now, I know normally... I stand where you are and you sit on these steps, but because we're doing things a little different, I thought I'd give you a, a better view than an empty church. You get to see all of the things on our altar and all the candles lit. Um, we're having a celebration because it's a really wonderful day. You know, I don't know about you, but whenever we, we talk about Easter, normally at our house we, we do something. We, we hide Easter eggs, and uh, sometimes we have something like this. And I don't know if you know what this is or not, but it's an Easter basket. But my guess is, is your Easter basket looks, will maybe look a little bit different than this one because this one is absolutely empty. You know, as a kid, I never saw an empty Easter basket. We always expected there to be grass and, and eggs and, and candy and all kinds of good stuff in there. How disappointing it would be if your Easter basket was completely empty. Normally, you'd expect it to be full of all sorts of goodies, right? And I'm guessing if you go hunting for eggs and you've got these little plastic eggs, uh, chances are your parents will probably put good things inside. But not these ones. These ones are plum empty. And if you were to find these eggs in your basket and they were empty, you'd 
probably be a, a little disappointed. And I, I don't know about you, but uh, at our house, we oftentimes will buy our children gifts. Gifts that don't always look like this. They're not wrapped this way, but can you imagine getting a gift like this? You just want to rip into it and you know, open it up, unpackage everything. Oh, it's from Target, it looks like. You open it up, you got all this paper, put forth all that work, and then you open the box up, and it is, well, it's empty. Well, that would be a complete bummer, right? We expect things to be filled. Easter baskets to have grass and candy and chocolate and, and eggs to have pieces of candy and presents even to have gifts. And if it was empty, man, that would be a huge bummer. But not today. Today, that's the whole point, is that it's empty. You see, in our gospel lesson this morning, some women went to a tomb, a grave, a, a place where Jesus' dead body was laid. And they fully expected to find that tomb full. But it was empty. And that's not a bummer. That's the best news of all because it, it tells us and shows us that Jesus... He didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave. That means everything that he did on the cross, everything that he did throughout Holy Week and his entire life, it was accomplished and it was pleasing and acceptable to our Father. So the empty tomb is not a bummer. No, the empty tomb is the best news that we could ever hear in our life because that empty tomb means our sins have been forgiven and we, we have life in heaven with Jesus. And we know that because Jesus rose from the grave, we too will rise. So, what's some, that is some awesome news. Now, I know you're going to go home and you'll probably, or you'll, you're already at home, you're probably going to be at home and have things and, and things are going to be full. But I want you to just take a moment and remind yourself of the one thing that is not a bummer for it to be empty. And that is the, the tomb of our Savior. It was empty, which means... He lives, and he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's fold our hands and let's thank God for, for that empty tomb. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you sent your son to live in our place and to die for our sins. It is sad to hear what happened on Good Friday, that Jesus had to die. But it is such good news to hear that, that Jesus did not remain dead, but he rose. To hear that the, the tomb was empty. Dear Father, move us through this Easter message not to be afraid, but to find great joy and great comfort in you and your Son and what he has done for us. Thank you for the forgiveness he won for us, and thank you for the resurrection that we have through Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, I would encourage you to ask your parents if they've got some kind of candy, because that's normally what I give you, but since we're not together, I can't. Um, either way. Um, have a happy and wonderful Easter. Stick around. We'll, we'll see you in the sermon. We'll, we'll now sing hymn 720, Christ Jesus Lay and Death Strong Band.
grace and peace and life to you. From God our Father, and from our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Do you have one of these? It's a smart watch. Mine's an, an Apple watch. I have an, app, uh, an iPhone, so the Apple watch pairs with it. I mean, many other companies make smart watches, but they're, it's, it's quite amazing. They can do many things. It's like a smartphone. Uh, the watch itself tells time, which it's a watch. It should do that. But it does so many other things. It can receive text messages. It, it, can, it can tell me how far I've walked in a day. It can even let me um, answer phone calls. It will even send me notifications from the apps on my phone if I let it. And because I like to know the things that are going on in our world, I, I have several news companies that I allow to send me notifications when something big happens. For better or for worse, um, I like to at least hear what, what the news and the media is talking about. And since our country has been really fighting the coronavirus, I'm not going to lie to you, I've been getting several messages, handfuls of messages every single day from several different news companies talking about the coronavirus and talking about deaths. How many deaths the U.S. has, how many deaths worldwide the coronavirus has caused. And just a couple days ago, we, we finally hit, uh, the world finally hit over 100,000 people reported, reported to have died from the coronavirus. That's a lot. And as I was thinking about our, our lesson, and, and Jesus died, and I was thinking to myself, the coronavirus is a very serious thing. And we rightfully should take it seriously, but it's a small piece of the puzzle, of the enemy that we fight against, isn't it? Because the reality is, is that 100,000 people, that's a lot of people, but I don't know if you knew this, but here's some really, I mean, saddening facts. 150,000 people on average die every single day. And if you break that down, that is 6,000 people per hour dying around our world every single day. That's a hundred, a little over a hundred people a minute. That's a little under two people per second. And if, I mean, if that doesn't do it for you, since the beginning of my sermon, that means a, a little over 200 people around the world have died. And that is a terrifying, a terrifying thing to think about. But I only, I, I say that not to scare you, but to see really how, how broad and how, how, wide our enemy really is the coronavirus is one facet of the greater enemy of of death which is the result of sin all those deaths are contributed to to sin sin in some way and as i was i was thinking about that man i i, I thought to myself there is no better lesson or no better place for us than to turn to hear some good news, gospel, from our God. And as we look at our lesson, we hear this. We hear, He has been raised. He is risen. He is risen. Leave the tomb and go tell others. See, our lesson is from Matthew 28. It's a gospel, uh, Easter account, just like in, in, the other ones. I mean, it's got the, the women going to the tomb early in the morning. And what we see is these women, they've, they've set their destination out to go see the tomb. That's what Matthew tells us. Our lesson starts this way. It says, after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. We don't get a, that myth. We don't get a whole lot of details from, from Matthew, but the other Gospels tell us they're going with spices. They're going there to, to find the body of their loved one, and they're going there to give it the, the proper preparations for a real burial. And it's kind of amazing is, is that these women set out, and their destination is the grave for Jesus. 
the Messiah, the Christ. Their destination is the grave. And I just, as I was studying that, it just, that just hits me. That is, a, that is a heavy thing to think about. These women are going to the grave of the one that they said was God's son. The Christ, or at least that's what people said about them. About him, I mean. It's fascinating. Their end destination was the tomb. Because everything that they had heard from the world around them was telling them, and has told them, and does tell them, that death is final. And that no one escapes death. Except that's not what we see here. If you look out into the world, the truth is, is yes, death takes everyone. And we realize that everyone does. There's there's no one that we would expect to to come back out of the grave except on the the day of the resurrection. But outside of that, if you look at this world, there's no reason for anyone to come back from the dead because death is final. And if, if that were to happen, it'd have to be some kind of crazy, uh, amazing act from God. It'd have to be some kind of earth-shattering thing to happen in order for someone to come back from the dead and to live. And that's what we see. Matthew doesn't call it earth-shattering. He actually says it's earthquake As we continue our lesson, we see that when the women get there, what do they see? Suddenly... There was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and was going to the tomb. He rolled away the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes, his clothing was as white as snow. And the guards were so terrified of him that they shook and became like dead men. This is a pretty amazing event. I'm guessing that the women in the morning, when they left, were not expecting to find any of that. Their expectation was to find a dark, gloomy tomb where their, their friend's body laid. And when they get there, they see some amazing event from God. They feel the earth shake, and they see this, this brilliant messenger, this angel, One that is so brilliant that it causes these two guards that have been set guard to to fend off anybody who's wanting to come and steal the body. This angel causes those guards to, to have so much terror, to be overcome by fear, that they fall down lifeless to the ground. And the angel doesn't stop there. I mean, this angel is brilliant, but he's not even, he's not even like a, He's not the main show, because it doesn't stop there. The angel is just there to make known of the real news, of the uh, the amazing thing that has actually happened. The angel tells the women, of course, he says, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And it's kind of amazing to hear what this angel says. One, he tells them the news that they were not expecting, which is the one that was crucified, Jesus, he has risen. He's not here. They were expecting for, for death to have continued to have hung on to Jesus. No. But then something else that he says that, I, that caught my attention is, he's not here just as he said. You see, Jesus had foretold this. God had foretold this through his word. In fact, Jesus tells his followers that if you flip back eight chapters to Matthew 20, Jesus says this to his disciples as they're entering Jerusalem. Matthew chapter 20 verses 18 and 19 says this, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the experts in the law, and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, flog, and crucify him. And on the third day, he will be raised. Jesus himself says to his disciples, I am going to be handed over. I am going to die. 
but I'm going to rise. And it's just kind of an interesting, interesting thing for that angel to say. Because chances are that these, these ladies have been around Jesus enough that they probably heard Jesus say that that was going to happen. And yet what? They didn't, they didn't, it didn't really sink in. Or maybe they're just so overwhelmed with the death of Jesus that, that they haven't had time to really grasp the words that Jesus said to them in his life. It's possible. But I find myself sometimes being in the same spot as those women. We, we, we know the promises that our God has given to us, yet sometimes the, the circumstances of this world causes us to, to either blank on God's promises or, or to not really believe them. And, and what I mean by that is this. As you look and you listen to, to the news and the media and all that kind of stuff, it is really easy for your, your eyes to get focused here on, on these earthly conditions, these earthly situations. And it's really easy then to be pulled away from what Paul says, which is to keep your eyes fixed on the, the heavenly things. And you can find yourself looking at all of this destruction and death, and you can find yourself sometimes worrying about whether or not you're safe or worrying about whether or not God is actually going to take care of you worrying about whether or not you're going to be all right or your loved one's going to be okay and what does God say God tells us that he's going to he's going to work for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose that he is he is working on behalf and ruling on behalf of his people, the church. God also tells us that he's never going to leave us nor forsake us. That we are in his hand. He also, also tells us that, that he is our help in every trouble. And so this idea of, of, of worry should never cross our mind. And yet what happens? We see the circumstances of this life and sometimes it happens. And maybe it's not just worry. Maybe, maybe sometimes we, we hear what, what God has said is good and right for us, and yet sometimes we just we look around and we see the circumstances in this life and we don't believe that. We, we look at the, the way that sin entices us and, and we think to ourselves, well, this will be better for me. This will be more enjoyable for me, and so I will entertain this sinful lust. I'll entertain this, this sinful desire to, to speak harsh words. I'll entertain the, the sinful the desire to just, to just let go of self-control and, and really let this guy have it. And the truth is, is it's not. And when we do that, we find ourselves really focusing and letting death reign in our life. But those women, as they were walking to the tomb, they needed to be reminded they need to be reminded what Jesus had already told them, what God's word had prophesied about Jesus. And so do we, especially now. As we look out, and I don't know how many people I've encountered, not as many as normal because we're all social distancing, but it seems like everybody wants to talk about death. And I think to myself, what a better, what better platform then to then talk about what our God does for us. Right here, God's word tells us very clearly, death does not win. Sin does not win. The things of death will pass away for those who put their trust in Jesus. Because Jesus did not stay dead. He was not defeated by sin and death, but he rose victorious from the grave. The angel speaks those words. And if an angel was speaking those words, there could be question for subject, but what we see next makes it abundantly clear that there is no doubt that our Savior is victorious. For as these angels were telling these women to, to, to not be afraid, they, they, they say this, they said, do not be afraid, I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, 
Just as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. And look, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. And so these women, with the, the message of the angel, they, they're hurrying off. And then what happens? They're hurrying off with fear and great joy. And they're running to tell the disciples. And then it happens. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They approached Jesus. They took hold of his feet and they worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. And those are the words that our God speaks to us. When we find things in our life being overwhelming, when we find things in our life that seem, seem like they're good for us and God says they're not and we buy into them and we find ourselves in a hole, we find ourselves worrying, what does God say? He says, do not be afraid. Yes, you have sinned. Yes, you deserve to die. Yes, death is in your future. But Jesus says, do not be afraid. Because I suffered the punishment of your sin. I went to the cross on Good Friday and I died for you. I lived in this world perfectly before my God for you. So don't be afraid. Jesus did not die. Or he, excuse me, he did not stay dead. He rose. He died. For me and for you. But death was not the victor. Jesus was. Life was. And because Jesus lives... That means your sins are forgiven. You're forgiven. You have peace. You have comfort. You, you have life. So fix your eyes on the heavenly things. Look and listen to what our God says and, and trust in His promises. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will hold you in the palm of His hand. He is working all things for your good. Do not be afraid. For our God has seen our biggest enemy, sin and its repercussion, death. And he has entered into this world and fought it for you and for me. And he has, he has won. For just as the angel said, he has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. And the next thing that Jesus says is, with this wonderful and great news, don't just hold on to it, but share. Those women went, that, that, on that morning, their final destination was the tomb, and yet this encounter, these, these words that God gives to them through the, the messenger angel and, and the, 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 the seeing of Jesus and worshiping of Jesus has, has caused these women to be willing to just go out in a, in a hurry and spread this message. Because it is a message that needs to be spread now more than ever. Tell others about what God has done. He lived for you and for your neighbor and for the people that you see in the grocery store. He lived and he died for you and for your neighbor and the people that you run into on a daily basis. Tell others this amazing news. It's kind of amazing, really, when you think about it. Especially right now, as you, you look and you, you see all of the things that are, that are happening in, in our world, it, it can get a little dark. And it's, I think, really easy to kind of be overwhelmed and, and scared. But that's why Jesus is so important. Because Jesus is the solution to sin. 
Jesus is the, the solution to death because Jesus, just as he says, is the resurrection and the life. Whoever be believes in him, even though he dies, yet shall he live. Those are the promises that he makes to his people. And when we trust in him, we, we know that, that we will rise. I'll tell you, it's really depressing to watch the, the number of people die. They, they have these clocks on the, the internet where you can just watch the numbers rack up and rack up and rack up and rack up and rack up. It is devastating. And all, at least for me, as I was looking at that and I was looking at the news, it really did make me just stop and think to myself, man, without Jesus, we would be lost. But because of what that angel says and because of what our God has done for us, we can rejoice and we can be excited and we can, we can celebrate Easter even if we're separate because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I, I filmed the, this service differently than, than when I taped the actual service itself and I've had a prayer request since then. So... Um, as we end this sermon, I'd like to say a, a prayer request as well. So let's, let's pray. Uh, and the, I'm sorry, the prayer request is for, for uh, Paul Brug, who seems to be inching ever closer to, to that resurrection glory that Jesus has prepared for all of us. So we ask that God be with his family here and now as they deal with, with that. Let us pray. Uh, dear Father in heaven, you... You know the enemy that we face. You, you know what is in us, and you know that we can never overcome it by ourselves. We, we couldn't even come close. And that is why you sent your son Jesus, our Savior, into this world to live and to die for us. Father, motivate us and be with us and comfort the family of Paul Brug as they find themselves coming closer and closer to death the death of their loved one. Remind them of what those women saw on that Easter morning, an empty tomb. Remind them of, of what that angel said. He is risen. And remind them of what our Savior said that morning to those women. Don't be afraid. For you have provided a solution to sin. You have provided life in our Savior Jesus. Comfort their family with these words. Remind them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that those who trust in him have life in heaven waiting for them. And be with those who are here and are, are, are watching their loved one go into heaven. Comfort them and remind them that you are with them, that you are watching over them, and that you will take care of them no matter what happens. We pray these things in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Let us join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's now time during our service when you set aside your offering. As always, you can just set it aside and, and, and then keep it for when you come and, and we get to join together again in worship. Or you could drop it off at the church office, both Zion and St. Jacoby. Or you can drop it off at the church office here in Mobridge. Or you can mail it in, as many of you have already been doing. We'll now continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of grace, you have brought us into a new and living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. 
Christ is risen. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. He is risen indeed. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Alleluia. What marvel, or we marvel at the love you showed by your willingness to sacrifice your son to pay for our sins. We bow down in adoration at your mighty power, which raised him from the dead. We praise you for sending the true life and light into the world. Lord Jesus, God of grace, you have filled our hearts with resurrection joy by your victory over sin, death, and the grave. You have conquered the darkness and given us comfort and hope. With the church of every age, we offer you unending praise, for you have crushed Satan's head and have removed our guilt. You are risen. Dear Savior, we who are weary and burdened come to you for rest, knowing that because of your perfect redemption, there is now no condemnation for us. You are risen indeed. Take away our doubts and fears, and daily renew in us the joy of our salvation. Alleluia. Holy Spirit, God of grace, you have called us by the gospel and brought us to saving faith in our risen Lord. We glorify you for opening our eyes to see the light of life. Keep us with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. He is risen. As we journey through life, make us yearn for the day when you will give eternal life to us and all believers in Christ. He is risen indeed. Dear Father in heaven, we stand in awe and amazement of what you do for us. Even though our world is filled with, with death and sin, you come here and you break forth. You break forth from the grave and you give up your life so that we might have life everlasting. Father, you, we ask that you would be with, with, um, with all the people that are longing for you, with, with Gideon, especially this morning as he is approaching the time when he will enter into your heavenly kingdom. We ask that you be with the sack riders who continue to be in Sioux Falls. We ask, with every, ask that you be with uh, our government as they look to, to manage the things that are happening in our country. We ask that you be with the governments around the world as they look to manage the things that are happening around the world as well. Bless the efforts of, of those who are looking to, to fight this disease Bless those first responders and doctors and nurses who, who put forth time and effort to keep us safe and protected. Dear Father in heaven, we also ask that you watch over and be with all of us this morning. As we look to find the joy of Easter, we know that there is some sadness because we don't get to share, share it with our brothers and sisters physically, but, but don't let that dim or, or darken our morning, for we know that the light of Easter is brilliant and magnificent and because of that, we have light and life everlasting. Father, move us through your word and your promises to find the great joy of Easter and the life that is only in Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we also bring you our private petitions. Work through us as we proclaim the saving message of the crucified and risen Jesus near and far, so that many others hear your call, ob obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, and join us before the throne of our God and of the Lamb. Alleluia. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
We now continue by singing our next hymn, hymn 719, Christ has risen, Alleluia.
Please stand for prayer and blessing. Let us pray. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us and all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We'll close our Easter service by singing In Christ Alone. You may be seated.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. What an awesome thing for us to focus our attention on. Just a, a couple of announcements before you can hit that, that stop button. Um, if you haven't heard already, St. Jacoby looking to thank and praise God for 100 years of his blessings. Um, they're postponing their, their service. It was going to be June 28th. They're moving that back later this fall. A meeting is set up in May um, in order to, to discuss those things. Um, if, if I understand it correctly, the council actually should be meeting on Monday. Um, and I'll probably call people and, and things of that nature just so that we can um, get together. There are some things that still need to be discussed as far as uh, online giving and other things of that sort. So um, all those announcements and everything else aside, may God bless you and, and give you so much joy in, in the resurrection because that's where we focus our attention on. That's where we find our life. That's where we find everything that we need to, to live here but also to live in eternity. May God bless you this Easter morning. Amen.